¿No habrás puesto transiciones automáticas? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just start. It's okay? So we will do in English. Gracias a mi amigo Jorge. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for coming. So there are many, so many great talks that are happening now, and thank you for coming. So a little insight uh, about this talk. We are going to explain how, how was the process for going uh, from uh, Azure Pipelines and Azure uh, APP Web Services to uh, uh, tools like Kubernetes and, and Argo CD. Of course, we are discussing about how was uh, the problem that we had during this process and how uh, our teams work with this kind of technology because you have to think that they used to work with um, Azure uh, ABP Web Services and uh, Azure Pipeline for, for many years, for many times. So, but let me introduce first. So, my name is Alfonso. I work at uh, Esper Erri in the Lidl Hub Digital. We do amazing and funny things. So one important thing is that we are looking for uh, Go developers <laughs> 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 and Donet developer. If you are interested in working with us, you can contact de directly with but me. Wait, 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 wait. I, wait, wait, I, I, wait, I, I need other, a referral. <laughs> you are doing the things totally in the wrong way. First of all, we need to grab them, showing how we work, and then we try to catch them. Okay. But don't, don't, so don't throw the hook before, before any, showing any case, how we work. Any case, if you, if you want, you can contact directly with me or my colleagues. Nah, nah. We, are, we are kidding. We are just uh, kidding. I'm Jorge Turrado. Probably someone here already knows about me. I'm Microsoft MVP. I'm CNCF ambassador. I'm also Keda maintainer. I don't know why. Or I never <laughs> use this kind of uh, publicity from my, my project. And I work as principal SRE on the Lidl Digital Hub. We are based on Barcelona and we work for Lidl Plus mobile application. Maybe you have tried to pay with them. And if it has worked, we are them. Mm -hmm. if, it, yeah, if it didn't work, our folks didn't do their work <laughs> properly. Uh, so let's just start. Uh, no. Oh. No, ta, ta, ta. oh, OK, OK. As you can see, my list of hours is not hours. So today Yet. I'm a Jorge's assistant. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can contact directly with, with him. Let's so start. the first thing that we, 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 I want to talk about is what is a deployment or what uh, does a deployment means. Probably every now in this room uh, know what is a deployment. If not, if anyone is not familiar with the concept, a deployment is the process of making an application available for the use putting an application into, into a server for receiving requests and user can interact with this application. So it involves the process of transferring files from one development environment to production environment. So if we move to the next slide, I, I go back. I don't work for you. You don't pay my salary. Oh, OK. But OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I come back 20, 25 years ago when I started to work. I started uh, as uh, 23 years old. So I remember that I, sta I started in a small company and we had uh, some servers. I had a server for Linux applications. I had another for Windows applications, another for databases. So when I needed to deploy a new feature into our page, I need to copy the file from my workstation to the server using this kind of command. FTP probably the most common uh, the most common that we use. So I, I don't know, probably there is uh, some uh, small company that still continues using this model, but obviously in a big um, company, in a big product, it's impossible to follow this, this way. So this way presented two problems. The first one is a manual process, and the second one, there is not uh, backups or maybe some external devices. But in any case, you have to copy the file from your workstation to the external device. So, oh, es como me tienes que pasar. <laughs> so, so, some years after appears the concept of uh, core repositories. Core repositories were, in, were invented in order to enhance collaboration and manage codes effectively. 
So code repositories solve uh, several common problems. The first one is okay. <laughs> the first one is collaboration because uh, enable teams in order to work in parallel and merge uh, the chains without any conflict. The second one is uh, about version control because you have a history of every chain that you have made. The third is backups. Code repositories enable a centralized storage. And the last one is documentation. My colleague Almudena is not here, no? Nope. My colleague Almudena always say that the documentation is in the repo and not in the Confluence pages. <laughs> but if you look this picture, there is one problem. The process is still continuous manual. So it's the moment of introducing a new concept. The new concept is pipeline. Pipeline. So pipeline is a series of automated state for deploying application automatically. And now you can see this picture. This is how we started a little five years ago. This is the real world. We still have some products that are deployed using this model, this you, way. You are not doing it the correct way. They won't want to work with us. <laughs> so we have Azure reports as code repository and two kind of pipeline, build pipelines and release pipelines, build pipelines, build the code, test it, and produce artifacts. These artifacts are taken by the release pipeline and release pipeline put this code into different uh, environments in our uh, app web services. So, and this way, it worked very fine for us because we use Azure App Web Services, a platform for managing and deploying application in Azure. This is the first uh, pipeline that we have created five years ago. We started with this kind of pipeline using boxes from the Azure, uh, Azure DevOps portal. So I, it worked very fine when the uh, products and teams were small, but when products and teams started growing, this kind of pipeline presented a lead to problems. Any change that you make through the portal is recorded, and the boxes are very rigid, are less flexible than YAML file. So the first thing that we did is go from boxes to pipeline as code using YAML files. YAML files solve those problems. You can use code repository. And the YAML files support more uh, features than the, than the boxes. So in this moment, it was the first scenario. We have to, we have to stop here. I haven't still talked about our, our infrastructure. During these years, our model of infrastructure, Jorge, look at me, was ClickOps model. ClickOps? ClickOps model. That's impossible. Click I, know, I know that you are. ClickOps <laughs> is a totally new term. <laughs> ClickOps, nice. We created all the resources manually through the portal. So in this moment, as you know, is the worst thing that you can do, create, create resources manually. So we started to migrate our infrastructure at infrastructure as code using Terraform files, okay? And we decide to deploy the code and its related infrastructure at the same time, in the same pipeline. And it worked very fine. It worked very fine for us. But we, we, started, to, we started to see a new problems. Pipelines took, took a, long time, a long time to, to complete. So, we had four or five uh, different environments, and it, each environment depended on the previous one. So imagine, if you wanted to deploy a new setting, not code, only one setting, you have to wait a long time, too much. The pipelines weren't agile. Which is the time? What is the time? More than 10 minutes. 
in some cases. Where do we come from? <laughs> Where are we going to? Which is the time? <laughs> what is the concept? No, I'm just kidding again. Sorry, I'm a bit troll. <laughs> so, at the same time, we began to have a more and more and more requests, a more and more traffic in our blogs. We started growing in number of users. So, uh, our app web services fell short. Uh, we experimented problems with TCP connections, and it was very expensi uh, expensive scale the web apps. So, in this moment, in this scenario, on the one hand, low, uh, slow pylons, and in the other hand, a technology that didn't, f didn't fit our needs, we started to think a new solution. And the solution was? Brrr, oh, surprise, Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Oh, surprise. I want to say something about pass the door to my college. The first thing, we are using Kubernetes now in a big part of our products, tools like to, uh, Argo, Prometheus, Kida. But one important thing that I want to say is uh, <laughs> Kubernetes now, it's, it's, it's a high. Everybody talk about Kubernetes, and it seems that everybody needs a Kubernetes cluster for running its application. But it's not true. It's not true. In our case, it solved a problem for us. Slow pylons and technology that fell short for us. You have to, uh, you have to, you need a, a deep knowledge about Kubernetes because it's really complicated to operate it. And you, you need a, be, uh, a deep knowledge to be success. We wanted, we wanted to move to a GitHub model, but we didn't want to introduce a lot of new features and new technologies, Kubernetes, Argo CD, Harbor, at the same time in our teams. So this is my, my end. I pass your, <laughs> your <laughs> so as you can see, we started to deploy into our Kubernetes in the same way. It's the same way that you saw in the previous slide. Two kind of pipeline. The build pipeline that create an image, put this image into a container registry, a Azure container registry, hardware doesn't matter, and a release pipeline that pull this image and run this image into different environments and different Kubernetes clusters. This is the first deploy that we did in our cluster. Some month later, we pass to... Is it, it my turn? It's your turn. Nice, hopefully. They are bored. <laughs> I promise that now the, the presentation woo, goes up. No, I'm just uh, kidding a bit. The point is that yeah, uh, when we started with Kubernetes, we do in a, in, a, in a baby steps, we follow baby steps because it's true that uh, Kubernetes is quite disruptive, te uh, disruptive technology within a big organization because if you work on a startup, for instance, you only need one or two different folks who know about the technology, but when you want to introduce a, a huge disruptive change within a corporation, because imagine we have more than 1,000 million users only on loyalty program. So the changes can't be done like, oh, let's try this fancy tool. We need to plan it and design an adoption plan for achieving the succeed. Because otherwise, it will be a problem, a fucking project, a problem, and a pain on our necks. So first of all, we started keeping the things as they are. It is what it is. Do you want to have Azure pipelines? We will keep the pipelines for you. But instead of using FTP, because probably you thought, oh, fucking people from Svars, they mm. are doing quite clickbait, where is the FTP? The app services are deployed by using FTP. And I promise that the Azure publicity ends right now. It's just because we use Azure, now it's for Kubernetes. So no more ads. 
they don't pay us. <laughs> so <laughs> just following the, the point is we plan to keep the current behavior, the, 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 the behavior that they had, the developers, just grabbing them using the tools that they know. For instance, we, oh, <coughs> before starting with GitOps, we, as, as Alfonso has said, we introduced pipelines for achieving the, the process. But despite the pipeline worked, and they worked quite well, it wasn't enough because there were other challenges and other questions like, but if we need to deploy another environment from scratch, what happens if we need to use another region in the cloud provider? If we want to go through GCP or AWS, there, are, there were some questions in our mind that we tried to solve. And GitOps was the solution for us. GitOps, not ClickOps, please. <laughs> Put away ClickOps from <laughs> your mind, and if someone say ClickOps, signal them, point them, and say, "Oh, that guy is crazy." So, using GitOps brings some benefits for us, for us because probably, if I ask uh, here, who knows what's Argo e, or uh, what uh, is Argo or Flags or Flagger, maybe some people knows uh, know about one of them, maybe all of them, but. Is there is is there anyone here who doesn't know what is Git? They are potentially candidates yet. <laughs> nice. First <laughs> test. <laughs> congratulations, you have passed the first the first <laughs> test. No, but the point is that Git is the universal point of truth nowadays, and it's true. If you don't know how Git works, probably you are not in a quite or a, a good company. So why don't get the, the power of Git in our daily basic? GitOps bring that to us. Just having the repository, a distributed repository, free for us because we are already using it. And we need to start looking for solutions because, okay, having the code on GitHub, on GitLab, wherever, it's quite easy. But how can we synchronize one code with the cluster? And Argo came to us. It's true that there were other options. Argo doesn't pay us either. So, <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding again. Uh, the point is that currently there are two big players on the open source because for us, inside a, comp a corporation, having some of or, or a bit of trust on the projects that we include is mandatory. So, we rely on CNCF as the source of truth or as a truth for us, a confident provider for us. So at that moment, there were just two projects, Flux and Argo CD. And in our, in our specific case, Argo CD uh, matched better. But coming back, at this point, in this specific moment, you can replace the Argo CD logo with the Flux logo, and the concept is exactly the same. We have a developer committing their changes into the code, and that tool in the middle will synchronize the code with the clusters. So we can remove the pipelines, which is an advantage. And you can imagine, OK, but pipelines work well. We thought it's so, until a developer, by mistake, destroy a cluster. And we need to trigger almost 60 or 80 pipelines which is not prepared for almost any CI system, because usually in your company could have five. In our case, we could have 20 concurrent uh, pipelines. If you suddenly schedule 60, 100 pipelines, the recovery plan will not be the best. So mm. in this case, this approach brings us the capability for having multi-cluster, multi-region. For us, the, the, the release process is just an implementation detail because we rely on the best backup system that we have, which is Git. Okay, <laughs> and how it works in a more high level because maybe Zoom, no, no, mm, not okay. Not <laughs> <I'll interrupt laughs> just opening a bit the window for checking the whole picture because just two icons is quite easy, right? It works. Uh, one developer, this black developer, <laughs> the quite <laughs> standard icon. <laughs> Just in their daily flows, 
create a PR, blah, 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 please review this, how to go some code, please, oh, amazing, I would have it, make it better, nice, and the code is merged. So then some CI process, choose your, choose your preferent uh, choice, Argo, Argo workflows, Jenkins, Travis, Azure DevOps, something someone has said Azure DevOps, whatever. You will generate the image, and once the, the artifact is already there, the things will happen. Just calling to Kubernetes API for making the things, for making the things happen. <coughs> and how it looks, because maybe from the high level. Don't worry, I have a demo at the end. It's not, yeah, it's not, I'm not just uh, selling quite a smoke, a bit of smoke. Please, I have a demo. It's, not it's only just a picture of from Argo CD page, so so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the one of the things that we had to take into account for choosing one tool or, or another tool was the developer experience, because probably everyone here or majority of the of the people here are close to SRE world, maybe sysadmin, someone could be the more close to developer environments, but usually humans, we as humans, maybe not we as SRE, but we as humans usually prefer a user-friendly interface, or surprise. And, and that, at that moment, Flux didn't have a really good user interface. And probably, if our case would have been just for us, for the SREs, instead of for extending the tool to the whole company, Flux has been our, a, a really good choice. But we need to include in the loop the development teams. And honestly, I love the colors. It's better having colors and moving icons than Jamel, Jamel, Jamel. Nice, the typical SRE exp experience. YAML, yeah. YAML, yeah. and even more YAML. Okay, so another, we have this quite repeat repeated. <laughs> Never mind. The point is that another difference that Argo had and uh, co in comparison with Flux is that Argo could run in, an, in a centralized place that can be managed by us. We manage the, the as SRE team, we manage the Argo CD installation, and we are responsible of having it run, uh, up and running, but we don't need to install anything within the Teams clusters, because just in giving a, a few more context, in our scenario, we have multiple clusters, and it's true that we could use Flux, but Flux, at that moment, this, this uh, choice was taken two years ago, more or less, so the, the project has grown a lot. But Argo also brings us the, the option for having a single control plane for multiple clusters, with multiple projects managing by RBAC, which is nice because, once again, when I work uh, for a startup, everything was well. You, uh, you don't have, or we didn't have uh, security. Doesn't matter, go to life. We need to put the product on, pro the, the feature on production. But it doesn't fit quite well when we are talking about a big corp. So those kind of features like our back, a centralized control plane, uh, moving icons, uh, child colors, are things that improve in the process. But despite I love the colors, I am still an SRE. Uh, the, the, my blood is red and I love YAML, that's the truth. So mm. at the end of the day, Argo still uses YAML. <coughs> there are a lot of different YAMLs, a lot of different uh, configurations that you, can, that you can use, but basically you have one important and another one important for us. We, I'm just keeping aside the project, the RBAC, blah, 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 a lot of boring stuff about security, but just from the, from the development point of view, how can we make that match? Because if you, re if you remember the picture, ah, wait, I have the pointer. In this picture, we are saying, I want this repository deployed into this cluster. Argo, make your magic. How does Argo make the magic? Just configuring it. We are, we are going to say, Argo, this is my destination. I want to deploy into this cluster 
within this namespace. Quite easy. The second part, the second part. What I, I, I have just defined the target, which is the, origi the, the origin. I can def define the source, saying, go to this public repository, take the root path, and the head revision. And that's all. Things happen. This is more than enough. Another boring stuff, like, OK, please create the namespace for me if the namespace doesn't exist. But just with this single file, I have connect the pieces. I have one repo, and I have <coughs> one cluster. And Argo will start the monitoring of the repository and automatically synchronize or suggest synchronization. It can be in, in YOLO mode or more secure, depending on the state. We didn't start uh, with automatic sync, obviously. <coughs> but it's more than enough. With this, Argo will make the hard work. So imagine 20 files, 20 YAML files like this one, instead of 20 pipelines. Define how using more YAML. YAML, YAML, YAML. Um, do you want to say something? No, the only difference between application and application set is you want to deploy into uh, many clusters. You, you have to use application set. Because uh, the application is uh, application set is a custom uh, resource co uh, of CDR, sorry, and is uh, for managed templating, and the template is the, the application. This is the way that we are using in in our cluster, one application, only one application for deploying into many clusters. Yeah, because obviously we needed to go step by step. Imagine yourself put yourself in a developer shoes and think about, I am just deploying with a bus script, and suddenly someone has introduced YAML concept, multi-clustering multi concept, probably some about of Helm, Docker, a lot of tools. So we needed to go step by step. And this, this concept is quite clear, but if you have, what happens if you have two clusters? I'm not talking about 20 clusters, just two. Do we need to, dup to duplicate the application step, yeah. the application YAML? No, the, the, the tool brings us another option that is the templating. Templating is known also as application set. It's just a template that we can configure, set some kind of generators, in our case, uh, cluster generators. Sadly, the picture is quite small, but yeah. imagine that there are um, amazing YAML definition for defining clusters or, or something so. So we can just define a template, and Argo will automatically populate the fields and generate application for us. So we don't need to be aware or to manage file by file, application by application. We can create automatization, automatize, uh, automatized process on top of it. So. Another time, I the same picture. No, no, no. Another no. time. I delete, I delete this. I delete this. Uh, this slide. Another time. <laughs> I have, to, I have to talk about this with, <laughs> with your boss. I delete. Yeah. Okay. And now it is. Okay. 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 This is Probably the this is the uh, final step that we are introducing our teams. Our Don't try out. to fix it. Probably this annual review for you will be terrible. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I can imagine it. OK, OK, OK. We have, first of all, when Alfonso started, we were deploying using FTP, FTP, FTP protocol from some kind of automated of pipeline into Azure App Services. Now we are using Kubernetes, Docker deployed using GitOps via uh, Argo City. So we are in the middle of the road. Nice. The change has been incredible. Our development teams are super happy. The release process, the life cycle of the new features has been improved a lot, terribly. So Jorge, one, only one thing. Now uh, our teams are capable to uh, set up a cluster and running all their application in them 10 minutes. This is the time that the pipeline uh, took in the past. So yeah. it's a, a really improvement. 
Yeah, just giving some, some insights about this, about this stage. We improve the disaster recovery from six to eight hours in average into 30 minutes. Obviously, depending on the cloud providers. If GCP don't, uh, doesn't bring you infra uh, the compute power, you are not a magician. <laughs> you need to run the things on top of some VMs or some machines. But assuming that the cloud provider, the cloud providers, because <laughs> there are a, a lot of them <laughs> doing city stuff, the, if the cloud providers bring us the infrastructure, we can deploy a new environment from scratch in less than 30 seconds, which is nice. Imagine that a single hour of, out of outage in our core product can mean more than 10 million euros per hour. So 30 minutes instead of eight hours, it's a huge uh, saving. Not reflecting on my salary, I have to say, <laughs> not yet, <laughs> but it's a really good improvement. So just changing the mindset from pipelines to GitOps plus Argo CD, we have improved the disaster recovery plan and also the scalability, because if one zone is affected by any kind of disruption, we can spin up another cluster in another region in another 30 minutes. So we can manage the disruption incredibly better than originally. But no, deploying is not the, all the work, because Kubernetes is a nice tool. How do we go about time? What time is it? Uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes only. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to speed yeah. up a bit the process. OK, Kubernetes is awesome, incredible. It's, it has changed incredibly the sector. But Kubernetes has some gaps or some limitations. One of them is the, rolling pro the, the rollout process. In Kubernetes, you can say, OK, if uh, I, have, I want to update the image, do a step by step uh, in a percentage, or you only live once. Remove all the previous instances and deploy all the new instances at the same time. It's the recreate approach. Probably you didn't know about it and move away from your mind because it's quite disruptive, but it's not enough because obviously we can define some kind of probes. We can say, no, no, but we can say, let's, uh, let's check the readies, the, the components, the third parties during the startup. Nice. But if the problem is not with the database connection, but with the database data, how can you handle it? It's not doable. You are fucked. It's the sadly truth. But there are progressive uh, rollout tools like Argo rollout or the Flux version that is Flagger, because at the end of the day, we, I'm talking about uh, our own experience, but I want to help or I want to share the knowledge. If you are using Flux, take a look to Flagger. It's another nice <coughs> tool. But with Argo rollout, we have changed the rollout process from just a rolling update based on the percentage to a real smart rollout process where we can deploy design then or define okay, maybe this, this workload is better to have in a blue-green. Do you know what is a blue-green deployment? Wow. The second take, take the, the notes, second take the notes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And Canary? <laughs> fua, 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 fua. Ah, <laughs> take notes, yeah. take notes, we have to hire. <laughs> but the point is that Kubernetes doesn't bring it out of the box, but Argo rollouts or Flagger do it. And that's a really, a really good improvement because we have improved our disaster recovery, but we need a way to improve our own disaster <laughs> generator, generation process. And we introduce a mechanism for develop for uh, analyzing the process before going to life. Uh, yeah, you can. let's go. Basically, not investing a lot of time because I think that I'm, white, I'm going quite, uh, quite slowly. Uh, blue green, I have the blue instance or the green instance. I, I, I spin up the other one. I execute a set of a suite of tests, uh, a manual test, whatever. And when something, when everything is wrong, bah, I click the button, I tap the button, I change the DNS and go to the other version. And with the canary, uh, I just move the load. Percentage, uh, 
uh, step by step with uh, percentage uh, steps for checking and measuring how it works. This is the both approach that Argo CD or Argo rollout uh, support, but <coughs> it's not the only one that you can use because one thing and the, the way that we use is when you enable the, the canary process, you can say, okay, I want to have two instances before receiving the traffic. And I can define different kind of analysis before starting the, the canary process. So you can just spin up the new version using a blue-green approach, execute your suite test to ensure the quality of the code, to ensure that we doesn't met, that don't include more errors that we the, that the amount we can handle, and in case of we have done, not continuing. I mean, basically, basically stopping the release process. If something goes uh, wrong during that step, the rollout process is canceled automatically, and no traffic, no users has been affected. And in that case, we can just start the progressive rollout. Last, uh, last slide. The last, yes. Nice. Um, Do you want to finish you? No, only want to say no. that uh, you need to install Argo rollout in your cluster instead of Argo, that you can install Argo in the central cluster, but Argo rollout need to run in, in, every, in each cluster, in, in every cluster. So, yeah, trying to summarize a bit the concept, we started using CLI, CLI and pretty, pretty, pretty bus scripts. I love them. No, we use bus script, then we swap to, to pipelines, then we, we include or we change to Kubernetes, we include Argo CD for deploying, we include Argo rollouts for doing the last mile uh, checks, for ensuring the quality just before going live, using the same data and the same configuration that the production instances uh, have, and now, we are going to show you, <laughs> trying to, to not leak in any kind of information, but before the going to the step, you. just for having the knowledge, this is how it looks. It's another uh, from store picture, but don't yeah. worry. <laughs> uh, don't show, worry show the I'm demo going to show and be careful, eh? No problem. <laughs> I leaked enough information during KubeCon, so I'm you not afraid. You have uh, to remember that this recorded the session, so yeah, in be careful. Too. In KubeCon too. Uh, no, I'm not sharing. Nice, thanks. Uh, oh my God. It's terrible, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not better. It's a mechanism to not leak in data. <laughs> Leaking it too small. Can you see the screen? It's uh, big enough. Okay. Basically, when we want to use Argo rollout uh, process, we have to use the n a new CRD, a new custom resource definition, because they replace the concept of deployment with their own uh, CRD. And majority of the CRD is almost the same that a deployment, because you got to do what you got to do. The deployment process is quite easy. The deployment spec is quite easy. So they follow it, but they include a few changes. For instance, the steps. Which are, which are the steps that I want to execute. First of all, in this case, I want to execute two instances. Please spin up two instances with the new version. Then run an analysis that basically is a sub of test that we have, that is an acceptance test that we have running on K6, but you can execute new one, you can call to a third party, you can do whatever you want because basically this runs a Kubernetes job. So if you can code it, you can use it. It's simple. And then, and only at that moment, and only if that test has passed, we start the rollout process. We start putting in production truly and actually the code, because until this step, the traffic is, mm, is root only to the previous version. So we are safe. 
we are using the same database, the same config, the same cluster, the same networking, everything is the same, that it will be in production without production traffic. So if this step fails, <coughs> we are fine. No users will not, will notice the, the difference. And then we just start a, a, a canary process moving the traffic from the previous instance to the, from the previous version to the new one. Let me. Start it again, retry. It's you at the environment, no? Eh? It's not production environment, no? No, <laughs> you only live once. YOLO, you only live once. <laughs> Let me try to refresh the skin. No, it worked. OK, so as expected, two new instances has been spin up, spun up, and OK. You have to imagine this shape in orange because it's making the or it's signaling the current state, but it's just following the script that I have defined and it's executing it. So probably at this step the process failed. I'm not sure, but I hope so. So if it fails, we will see that automatically it will be rolled back. So no users will be affected. We have introduced or we have tried to introduce um, not the best code, saying it polite. I have to be friend of developers. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, or we can, we have protected our customers and our products from mistakes, not from malintended actions, obviously. And when I make jokes about development or city code, we are humans, we can introduce, introduce mistakes. Indeed, I was almost near to fuck the production environment on an internal demo because I commit <laughs> <laughs> the grown code to the grown place. But in this case, it has passed. It has passed. Nice. Let's see the process. It has passed, so it has moved the traffic, and we are there. If I go, oh no, it has failed. Nice. Better, as expected. I can go to the logs because I run a Kubernetes pod, a Kubernetes job, and I can see the logs and there were a plenty of errors in this demo, in this example, but it's as expected. I have seen, or I, ha or I can see the errors and the process has been reverted. And how can I know it? Because after a few seconds, the last uh, version has been rolled back. I still have some some uh, pods with, let me see the life, with two hours since the creation date. So the rollback has been reverted. The UI is not the best because it's the, a beta version that I am using for several reasons, but oh, oh my God. You can see me, say me, Jorge, are you stupid? I can mm -hmm. see the age, please. No, I'm no worry. Basically, <coughs> the pod was created two hours ago, and this is the running pod, the running pod. So the users haven't been affected, and it's the important way. It's the important point in this, in this demo. We have changed from manually uploading binary code using FTP into a full automated process that brings us a security network, a security net for protecting our customers. And that's all. Yes, that's all. Do you have any question? <laughs> yes, for sure. Go ahead. Database. The database is the same. It depends. It depends because if you use uh, if you use some database, for example, with a scheme, probably you will have a, 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 a job for modifying. But as you are using Kubernetes and you need to make the, the, the database, the scheme changes uh, step by step, you have to be able to revert them for not, have, for not breaking in Kubernetes. The, the code will be reverted. I mean, 
nor use or using Argo CD or not using Argo or using Argo rollouts or not using Argo rollouts, any scheme change that you perform on the database can, uh, has to be revertible or or you can be or you should be able to. No, because we use a schemeless databases. Yeah. It's an advantage that we <laughs> have. Any other question? So thanks no. for joining us. If you have any, if you don't have any other question, thanks for joining us. And remember that we are looking for a new college. <laughs>